How to use a book to get on podcasts. If you're watching this module, it means in your marketing plan, you identified two things. A, se a specific segment of your audience listens to podcasts, and there's some aspect or a part of your story or your book that would be appealing uh, to talk about as a guest on those podcasts. So in this lesson, we're going to teach you how to get booked on podcasts. The methods we're going to show you have resulted in being booked on pretty much every single podcast in the iTunes top 100, with the exception of a couple of NPR ones that are really annoying and, and no one can get booked on, <laughs> uh, but almost every single other one I've gotten people booked on. So the first phase is to prepare your pitch. Step one in preparing your pitch is researching the podcast that makes sense for you to be on. So make a list of the podcasts you want to be on. Now, you should have done this under the marketing plan under what are the podcasts that the majority of your audience listen to. But podcasts, unlike other forms of media, it's totally valid to make a really long list of podcasts that you'd like to be on, right? So uh, in the resources, we show you kind of a few places where you can research podcasts. Don't just go to the iTunes top 100. Uh, a lot of those are pretty big podcasts now and they're actually not easy to get on, number one. And number two, they appeal to a really broad audience and chances are broad audiences are not going to be um, sort of what you're looking to or what you're going to be able to talk to with your book. You probably want to be looking either in the niche categories on iTunes or look at some of the resources. There's other ways to search for podcasts that have good audiences and are good download numbers, but also talk to the audiences you're looking for. Once you've found a list of podcasts that make sense, again, this is just like every other module, you need to really be focused on uh, uh, like, you know, does the audience, who is the audience, do they make sense, those sorts of things. But once you, you have your list, you should listen to at least one episode. Like I can't say this enough, listen to an actual episode of each podcast to understand what is the voice of the podcast, what interests uh, uh, do their audience have, how do they, um, interview guests, who's listening to the podcast, why do the, the audience tune in, what are their biggest problems, what kind of guests does the show like to feature, those sorts of things. Once you have a good feel for the podcast, you should be able to answer the really the one most important question. What information do you have that their audience is going to use to change their lives? If you have an answer, you can probably get on the podcast. If you don't have an answer or the answer sucks, you're not getting on the podcast. It's that simple. Again, remember, no one at any of these podcasts cares about you or your book. They care about their podcast and they care about the audience for their podcast and they care about whether you have something to say that will change the lives of their audience because if you do, uh, or at least impact their lives, because if you do, then they probably want you on the podcast, right? Remember. Only They only care about themselves, not about you. So you've got to orientate your stuff to whether it's going to benefit them. The next step is researching and finding the preferred pitch method for the podcast. Now, podcasts are still a relatively new domain in media. Uh, and so many podcasters didn't come from old school media. And so there's not really a designated evolved set of norms for pitching. So absent them having a specific pitch procedure, I would say you should email them. For most podcasts, emailing them is gonna work. So the next phase is your pitch. And the first step in this phase is crafting your pitch to podcasts. Now, once you've identified the appropriate podcast you wanna pitch, and you've seen if they have any pitch guidelines, you can now craft the pitch to send them. Uh, podcast pitches can be a little bit different than other media, because again, they don't have to be timely. They're far more likely to respond to evergreen content. So there's a few key things to remember for your pitch. You're not pitching your book. No podcaster wants to cover your book or your business or you. They want to cover information or stories or angles that will matter, matter to their audience. Now, those can involve you or your book, but it's not about you or your book. Right? It's an important distinction. So ultimately, the question you got to ask yourself is how is your pitch going to help their audience reach their goals? If you have an answer, you're going to get on. A good answer, you're going to get on. If you don't have a good answer, you're not going to get on. This usually means you're taking a specific piece of information or a story angle from your book, which is fine, and you're gonna package it in a way that's appealing to their audience. I keep saying this again and again, but most people get this wrong. Now, your pitch should clearly answer these three questions. There's only three for podcasts. What do you wanna talk about? What are the most interesting, compelling points? 
what's the takeaways or the value add for the audience? Now, here's some examples of uh, angles that authors who've worked with us have used successfully. JT McCormick, uh, who's actually the CEO of our company, but has also been on multiple podcasts like Noah Kagan's podcast, which is really big, Mike Dillard's, which is really big, and a few others. JT has two big angles that really, really are appealing. The first one is his personal story, his backstory. His dad was a pimp and his mom was an orphan. And this guy came from nothing. Like, like he likes to joke his parents were too poor to even live in the projects. That's how poor he was. And so to come from that background and become CEO, not just of our company, but he's also he was CEO of a major software company before he works with us, worked with us. That's an incredible story. So just that story alone is super interesting. But on top of that, JT is really, really skilled in a lot of core business uh, techniques that many people aren't. A lot of people like to talk about the sexy things in business, but JT knows how to scale a business and that's really difficult. And a lot of podcasts are really, especially now, uh, podcasts in entrepreneurship and in business are really interested in the core business skills that JT has decades of experience in. So those two angles, especially the combination of those two angles, makes JT a very appealing pitch for a lot of places. Another example of an author who's worked with us is Ari Maisel. Ari has an incredible sort of set of techniques. He has a company called Less Doing that essentially is on the absolute cutting edge of productivity and efficiency. And he has essentially an endless bevy of techniques that are always bleeding edge up to the minute most current about what, what apps to use, what software to use, what not to use, how to use it, uh, VA usage, all these sorts of things he's really, really good at. And that's all, that's an evergreen, even though his specific uh, uh, talking points change, the thing he, he the, the area he talks about is all productivity, efficiency, uh, software use, that sort of stuff is always interesting uh, to, to uh, podcasts, especially again, business and entrepreneurship podcasts. They always want to hear about the next hot thing and Ari can always deliver it. Now, those are two examples of two totally different types of pitches and to two totally different types of authors. Uh, and both of them have books. Again, notice how I didn't mention their books. Their books fit into their stories. They're part of their stories, but I didn't pitch the book. I pitched their stories and what they added to the audience. Now, some advanced pitching techniques I'm gonna throw at you. Remember, the less you make them think, the better. Meaning, like, you come up with the questions the host can ask. You come up with maybe the titles, uh, the title of the segment that sets you up to deliver any sort of angles that set you up to deliver amazing information or valuable information to the audience. You're going to make it easier for them to say yes. Uh, also, this, uh, like I said, it means recommending really good podcast titles, episode titles, it, it, uh, angles story angles, uh, uh, places to go, things to ask. Not all podcasters are going to want this, but you should have it ready and prepared so that they can either use it or integrate it into what they uh, do. Some podcasters do extensive research, some do none. So you need to be prepared for both. The next step is actually pitching the podcasters. The key lesson about pitching is that you want to connect with the podcasters as people. Remember that they're just like you. They're trying to do a job. They're trying to do their best at it. So you treat them like actual people and not, um, you know, narcissistic uh, uh, minions who are there to serve you. And you're going to do way better. So there's a few pitch rules for your emails. Keep it below 200 words. Use the podcaster's name. Customize the intro to show that you understand the podcast and the audience and the podcaster. Get to the point of your angle quickly and take up no more than two paragraphs. Remember to use this format in your pitch. What do you want to talk about? What are the most interesting and compelling points or angles? And what's the takeaway or value add to the audience? Uh, you can spend some time talking about yourself because podcasters actually do like people with impressive bios. That's going to help you get on the show. Just don't go on and on about it. Just mention the two or three or four things that they're going to mention in their intro because that's going to help sell them. The higher status you are, the easier it is for you to get on podcasts. Uh, if you have an audience to promote the podcast to, definitely mention that. The podcasters tend to really love that. If you, if you can guarantee, no one can guarantee, but if you can uh, promote it to your Twitter following of 100,000 and get them 5,000 more downloads than they normally get, they're going to really, really respond to that. Uh, mention that if you've, you've done podcasts before, 
I would absolutely mention that. Also mention you, that you have a high quality USB microphone and a good internet connection. It makes a huge difference. There's nothing more annoying to a podcaster than when the audio goes out or it's jumpy or the Skype is, is sounds, makes you sound robotic. That drives people crazy and it ruins podcasts. Also, the email, the subject should be about 55 characters. It should encompass the idea. Even better if it's the podcast's potential title. And like always, plain language, no buzzwords, no jargon. In the resources, we have a good template you can use that's worked really well for us to pitch hundreds and hundreds of podcast appearances. Obviously, you have to customize it, but it's a really good starting point. Now, the third phase is the follow-up. If you send an email pitch, obviously you can follow up, just don't annoy them. You know, wait a week or so, send a follow-up asking if they received the pitch and if they need more information. Um, you can follow up your email with a call, which can be effective. Usually it's not easy to find phone numbers for these people, but whatever you do, only follow up once. Uh, don't bother people and don't pester people. No one likes that. Uh, remember, you can always pitch a completely different angle later on, or you can repitch them even the same angle in six months after you've done, let's say, 10 more podcasts and you've raised your profile. That often happens with big podcasts. They want to wait until you've done a bunch of others until you have a name. One of the really good ways to follow up again is on Twitter or other social media. It shows you're a real person, not a PR flack. And it also shows them that you're sincere and polite and you treat them like a person, which incidentally, make sure you do when you follow up with them. If a podcaster responds to your email or returns your call, uh, I hope you know to res respond quickly. Podcasters are not quite like media where they have really tight turnarounds, but they do tend to be heat seeking missiles and they do tend to follow things that get them excited. So if you've got their interest, dive in, don't set, um, you can set your pod, once you've, they've agreed to have you on the podcast, you can set the date, you know, weeks in advance, that's fine. But if they want to do a preliminary call to get to know you and see if they want to book you, do that as quick as possible. That's where you should be, uh, where you should follow, um, uh, you should jump on it quickly. The next phase is recording the podcast. The biggest fear for a podcaster is bad audio. Make sure you test your mic over and over. Make sure everything works. Uh, like if you have to record a, a, a mock podcast with a friend at a, you know, who's in a different house or a different country even, we recommend the Audio-Technica ATR2100 or various other Snowball or Yeti mics. They're all linked in the resources. The point is you need a good mic you don't have to go crazy like this is a serious professional level mic, but you need a good mic with a good connection and good uh, to good USB connection and a good internet connection. If you can hardwire in, hardwire in. It makes a difference. Make sure you have your talking points down before the podcast. Think of someone sitting in front of you listening to you talk about this. That's what you want to kind of be like. You want to be succinct to the point and deliver value. Remember that this is not a conversation. Conversation is free flowing. You're reading other people's body language. Oftentimes in podcasts, you won't even see the other person. Sometimes you will, it's video, sometimes not. But the point is you need to really be ready it, uh, to sort of talk in a way that makes sense on a podcast and that works on a podcast. What we recommend is to start, always have a relatable story that's quick and, and really uh, bite-sized and emblematic. Uh, or valuable. If you can start with that sort of story, something a minute, two minutes, three minutes that you can tell well, has a great point, people are going to remember, you're going to do a good job on the rest of the podcast. Many authors are tempted to start off listing their accomplishments or going through a fast overview of their career or summarizing all the points they're going to make. This is boring. You want to, you want the audience to relate to you at the beginning, tell them a story uh, about a moment they can identify with. I'll give you a good example. When I do podcasts, as if I'm doing a podcast about Book in a Box, what I do is I start off with the origin story of the company because the origin story is a problem that a lot, I tell the story well, and it's a problem that a lot of people have. The basic idea is a woman wanted to write a book, didn't want to sit at a computer for a year and do it. And so I had to help her solve this problem. And how I did it was kind of a unique way that ended up becoming the company, right? And so a lot of people can identify with her and her problem. And the story is kind of compelling. It, it, you have a lot of highs and lows. It gets to a really good point and it's fast. I can tell it in two or three minutes and I can make it seem interesting. I make fun of myself a little bit. There's some funny points. It's a great story. And most importantly, I practice it so I nail it. I would highly recommend you have at least one story you can go to in your podcast uh, to start with or to tell at another point. Storytelling is 
always, always, always the best way to communicate in podcasts. Now, most hosts for uh, definitely of good podcasts that ask pretty good questions. So you can just kind of follow their lead. But if not, uh, set up your quest questions such that you can lead the audience through what you want them to know. So for example, uh, a lot of times in a lot of podcasts, I will send ahead a list of suggested questions and the way they work basically is the, the first few questions set up the problem standing in the way of the audience. So in my case, you know, why, why can't you write a book? Why is it so hard? What are you afraid of? What's stopping you that they want a book and they can't do it. Right? So a few questions that kind of bring that out. So put the audience in that mind frame. Then I kind of talk about myself, intro myself as the guy and talk about how I used to face these same problems or that I'm an expert trained to solve these problems, right? Then you, then you want questions that kind of talk about the actions that they need to take to solve the problem, which in a lot of cases is going to be a summary of what you talk about in your book. Then you kind of describe the success they're going to get from taking those actions or the failure they get from doing nothing. And then you want to kind of have a call to action, right? So it's a basically like the hero's journey you're taking them through. You can set up your questions that way. It works really, really well. I'll give you another really advanced pro tip for podcasts. This is the final one I'll give you and be careful with this because it can backfire if you're not good at media. But a lot of times I find myself on podcasts where the podcast host didn't ask for questions ahead of time. I may even have sent questions. They are not using them, but they also didn't do any research. So they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Right on a podcast where the host does their own research, they're almost always going to do a good job. And a podcast where the host is a good conversationalist, they're almost always going to do a good job. Or if they just use your questions, they'll probably do a good job because you're used to answering them. The disaster scenario is they didn't use your questions and they're not doing a good job. What do you do then? I'll tell you what I do. I basically just ignore their questions and I answer the question I want to answer. Right? It's kind of an advanced technique. You'll notice a lot of politicians do this on both sides of the aisle. Uh, they'll get asked a hard question and they talk about something else. You can do that on a podcast. Here's the key. The key is if you make it about what the audience cares about, no one's going to care what the actual initial question is. As long as it's even vaguely related to what you're talking about, if you're delivering value to the audience, they're going to think you're a really good guest. And half the time, the podcast host will, even if it's unconscious, will follow your lead and ask follow-up questions about where you took the questioning. I do that all the time on podcasts. It works really well. Keep that technique in your back pocket if you ever need it.